Hello and welcome back to Numica's Lifehack series. Today we will focus on unsteady runs, simulations, view runs, and we prepared a case for that again, the Aachen turbine, which you can see here. But instead of using the nonlinear harmonic method, which is pronounced here, today we will focus on view runs and for the NLH. Please have a look on the life hacks we already produced. Now you can do the full unsteady runs of the complete machine, leading to 36, 41, 36 blades. And you can imagine that with a mesh like that, you will need some time to simulate that. Of course, in many cases, it can be necessary to do that. But in some cases, you can also use the domain scaling approach, which is shown here. And you can modify slightly the number of blades. So in the rotor passage, we have 42 blades instead of 41 of the original geometry. And by that, we can use the domain scaling. So we have a segment of 60 degrees in each row, leading to 6, 7, and 6 blades, which are meshed. In the end, it depends on the case, and it's up to you what details of the flow you want to resolve, and if a domain scaling is acceptable, or you need to do the complete 360 degree U runs. In both cases, the procedure is basically the same, and it's even the same in Fine Turbo or Fine Open if you do a simulation with unstructured grids. In Fine Turbo, but also in Fine Open, it is possible to set up the computation such that you define all the necessary settings for the U runs and include a couple hundred iterations for a steady state solution. You can do that, of course, but I personally choose a separate computation in the same project where I do the steady state initialization and afterwards I make a new computation and do the U runs there. Then, don't be surprised, in the section where you define the rotor starter interaction, you can only select the domain scaling for both the domain scaling itself, but also if you simulate a full 360 degree mesh. The reason is simply that the periodicities have to be equal, which is the case for both ways of simulating U runs. Then, if the, the simulation runs stable with the CPU booster, please do that in order to save some time. If the simulation diverges, then probably it's a good idea to switch off the CPU booster. The next point is the number of inner iterations. By default, they are set to 100, but in many cases, you can reduce them without a loss of accuracy. We will show that on the next slides. Afterwards, you will define the time steps, which we will discuss later. Then you set up some expert or advanced parameters depending if you are in fine turbo and fine open, these are slightly different, but we will discuss it later. Then the last point, it really makes sense to do a small test before you start the real case you want to simulate. You can do a blade to blade mesh as I proposed here. This runs quite fast within a couple of minutes on a single core machine and you can avoid a lot of mistakes before starting the real big case, which probably runs for a couple of hours or days. As I said, the number of inner iterations are set to 100 by default, but you can see here, for example, the mass flow of the Aachen turbine, and you can see that after, let's say, 10, 50, 20 iterations, the mass flow doesn't change within one main iteration loop. So in that case, for the mass flow, you can think of reducing the number of inner iterations, which is shown here. I used 15 inner iterations, and the zoom shows that even when the mass flow changes rapidly in the beginning of the simulation, 15 inner iterations are sufficiently fine in order to resolve the flow here. Of course, this depends on the machine you are dealing with, and if you are interested in the global or local quantities. That may make a difference, of course. Then we have the expert parameters in Fine Turbo. For example, the NBL RES. That parameter defines if the global or also the blockwise residuals are written to the res file. And the blockwise residuals make sense to use if you want to debug the case if one block 
is exploding and the residuals are showing that, then it makes sense. But typically for a urine simulation, that needs too much space. And then if you load the rest file in the monitor, this slows down the investigation basically. So in a case here, I uh, computed that makes a difference from 1.9 megabyte to 788 megabytes. So it really makes sense to use this, that parameter and to set it to minus one for a urine simulation. Then we have IC out. That parameter defines if the unsteady results are overwritten each time a period, which means in that case here, either the 360 degrees or the 60 degrees for a domain scaling approach. If that period is overwritten each time or if a continuous time result is written out. So if you have, let's say, six periods computed, then with IC out zero, all the results are saved. And if you have IC out one, then only the last period of that is saved. In the end, it depends on what you want to investigate. If a periodic behavior is expected, for example, or a non-periodic phenomena is to be investigated. For fine open, we have the RS output multiple. This parameter should be set to one in order to save the solution from the beginning. And that becomes important if you want or if you need to do a restart from a previous unsteady simulation and then selected multiple files for output format. The out CPU per iteration makes sense in order to track the computing time, especially for heavy urine computations that may make sense if you want to tune your setup. Then you get the additional information how much CPU time was used per iteration. Then we have out global quantity per iteration. That parameter defines if the global quantities are also written in another file format as a function of time steps, which may make sense if you want to analyze some global quantities afterwards or during the simulation. The parameter out mf file version makes sense to use if you are typically using fine turbo and this is maybe the first case you run with fine open then you have the same file format for the mf file where you see the global quantities written then we have out copy files which is for linux only and it can save a lot of disk space for very big projects because it uses symbolic links instead of copying files to the subfolders of the computation in any case if you are not sure which parameters to use you can of course contact your local support team and also can have a look into the manual. Maybe there are other parameters which make sense for your case as well. Now going to Fanturbo, we can select the number of in iterations here. In that case, as I showed before, I used just 15 in iterations because that was sufficient, at least for the mass flow. And then here I set the two export parameters which I described before and selected 16 number of angular positions so we have a 60 degree domain in each row that corresponds to a time step of one degree I'm saving every four time steps which could be finer of course depending what you want to see and in that case also I included a time averaged solution and typically I choose for the output for visualization intermediate and multiple files. This is in particular necessary if you want or need to do a second order restart. Steady iterations for the initialization I did not choose any because I did a steady state run before and the number of time steps I choose 360 so to simulate a complete full circle if I would select number of periods in that case that would correspond to six periods because one period is considered to be a 60 degree part for this configuration and just a small note on fine open there you can typically define the number of angular positions as well just one exception, 
if you don't have a rotor starter interface, so if you simulate only a rotor or only one stator row, then you need to define the time step in seconds. So that was it for today. I hope you got some ideas for your next U-Run simulations. If you face any issues or have questions, please let us know. And otherwise, just see you next time. Thank you.